Seattle clamped down on its homeless population ahead of the Major League Baseball All-Stars Week coming up July 7th through the 11th, clearing encampments, cleaning up streets, and moving RVs, giving the city a livable, business-friendly appearance. But as conservative radio host in Seattle, Jason Rance points out, it's not all good news. According to Rance, what's going on is they're cleaning up the streets in Seattle and the city has failed to curb the issue of growing homelessness there on a regular basis. And it's taking action now to save face as it welcomes people from all over the country to the Midsummer Classic event. So it sounds to me that their main qualm here uh, is that this is an issue all of the time and they care more about the money they're making off of this big event where they have a bunch of people coming in for. I mean, my take on this is you should also care about the city being worker friendly and curbing the homeless population by ensuring that there's good paying jobs and a thriving economy. Homelessness is never a problem you can fix by just pushing it around. And so by the U.S. government intentionally keeping a population of people out of a job and unemployed, how can you expect those people to pay rent and have homes? They have to live and sleep somewhere. And for a lot of people, their only option is the streets. That's a, a dysfunctional economy. So the problem's a lot bigger than just why are they doing it over MLB All-Star Weekend and not on a regular basis. The problem is why are they not addressing the problem of homelessness at its root and just treating it as an eyesore? Well, I think that's fair to say that they're not treating homelessness as a comprehensive issue, but the norm or the majority reason why people end up homeless is not because just they don't have a job, but because they're suffering from either mental illness or drug addiction. That's the vast majority of homeless people who end up on the streets. And in a lot of cases, the cities that do offer resources to these individuals, they can't force them to accept the help. And so a lot of people will not go into shelters or go into um, addiction programs because they're simply not interested in trying to stop their addiction at that time. And we don't have a system where we say, okay, but you have to go to a treatment center or you have to get help for your mental illness. That's one of the problems that's been happening in D.C. I've been covering the homelessness crisis here for quite some time, and the National Park Service is trying to clear out all of the encampments that are on public parkland by the end of 2023. And they're running into this problem that you mentioned, which is that the individuals who get displaced from these public parks end up just finding another place to camp out because they're not taking advantage of some of the long-term services that are offered. And so it's a, it's a difficult issue to tackle because on one hand, you want to keep the city safe for people who are walking past these encampments, for the people who live in them, certainly, because I don't think it's compassionate to just have people hanging out on the street where they're um, you know, urinating or defecating in the place that they live. They are around other people who are perhaps mentally unstable and potentially violent. Um, but you also have to decide whether or not you are going to force people to get help um, or if you're going to allow them to continue to move around different places where they're camping. Um, and so to me, this uh, this announcement that they're going to be clearing out the homeless encampments in San Francisco just because of the All-Star game is, um, I think, as you mentioned, Jessica, just the latest example of how these uh, these city officials don't take the crisis seriously and they're not interested in looking at the root issues. They're just interested in making things aesthetically pleasing when it matters for their bottom line. Yeah, I think when it comes to public policy approaches to homelessness, any policy, not just pertaining to homelessness, is only as good as a city or a state's or a country's ability to implement it. And a lot of folks who are homeless are not aware of the resources available to them. A lot of people that are using drugs don't want to be using drugs. Most people who get evicted or lose their homes don't want to be in that position, don't want to be living in the streets. And then once they are on the streets, it's a pretty unpleasant experience when you're in that kind of a mental state and physical state as well. It's cold outside. Using drugs is something that I think a lot of people take to because they're put in that position. And so when it comes to addressing homelessness at its root, I think ensuring that anybody who wants a job in the United States 
should be able to have one. And the market is failing to employ all people. I think that's going to be the case in any economy. But the way it's currently operating is this belief that there's a natural rate of unemployment, that if more people are employed than this arbitrary statistic that the Federal Reserve has admitted they frequently get wrong and that the data doesn't support, that if unemployment dips below a certain level, inflation will become a problem. When in reality, all keeping a population of people unemployed without an ability to make money to pay rent does is ensure that wages and benefits are kept low and it puts corporations at an advantage. And I think the city, by cleaning up the homeless encampment just before the All-Star Game, shows how much the government is working to make our economy a safe environment for businesses to exploit workers and exploit the resources and land that we all have and live on. And I think that's really at the heart of this problem. And that's what's created the homelessness crisis in the first place. And so to address the problem at its root, we've got to put people in houses. That's how you resolve homelessness. No one can get a job from the streets. You need to be able to shower before an interview. You need to be able to have access to training and resources and be able to come home at the end of the day and shower so you can show up again tomorrow. We need to put people in a position so they can succeed economically. I think everyone has a stake in that. And then you increase productivity. It's literally a sound economic approach. The only reason that we don't do it is if you follow the money, is that the current system's pretty good for big corporations. I think that sounds really nice on its face, but might be a little bit naive. In California, particularly in Los Angeles, where they have tried to put homeless people up in hotels and other temporary or long-term shelters, what ends up happening, unfortunately, due to the mental illness and drug addiction, is that they end up trashing the place and they end up making it basically unlivable for everybody else who occupies those spaces. So it would be great if we could just put people in a house and all of a sudden they would become productive members of society and they would be able to get a job. But until you really address the underlying issues as to why they're unable to keep a home, which include the mental illness and drug addiction, not just not having a job, then you're basically just outsourcing the problem to citizens who had nothing to do with causing it in the first place. I don't think it's naive. I think it's quite enlightened to envision a, a world where we have policies that allow our economy to function, right? We can put people in homes allow them to get jobs, give them training like the Danish flex security model, which has been very successful in managing people experiencing periods of job loss and unemployment so that they can re-enter the economy and become productive workers. I think something like that would go over quite well in the United States and the short-term investment of housing and mental health care and health care when it comes to medically assisted treatment for drug abuse. I think that we would see the majority of the problem resolved. Will there be some people who are so far gone or so caught up uh, in drugs and their mental state that they can't be helped? Maybe. But if we don't try, we won't know how much a solution would resolve the problem. So I think uh, at the bare minimum, we should be trying more than just putting all of the homeless folks' belongings in a dumpster and moving it to a new location so they can find a new place to sleep at night. That doesn't feel like a policy solution to me. So I think we have to try the policy solutions that have worked in other countries that have the potential to work here. And we have to try new things uh, for the ends of, of helping the community on a constant basis, not just creating a business friendly or clean environment, but because we care about the people experiencing homelessness. Yeah, I think the question is, do we have the willpower to make people receive treatment, even if they say that they don't want it. Um, because having job programs or transitional programs for people who are out of work before they reach homelessness is an awesome policy. I think that's a great idea. But once people are already in that position and they are struggling with the mental illness and drug addiction, then I think that we have to take a step further and say, you have to go into this program, you have to get the help that you need, and no is not an option because you're not only hurting yourself, but you're hurting the community around you. And it ends up becoming a snowball effect where other people are dragged into the mess. And so I think so far, unfortunately, it seems like a lot of the officials in major cities who are trying to tackle the homelessness crisis are not interested in doing what's perceived as the hard thing because they think it's not compassionate or inhumane, but I think it's more inhumane to allow people to flounder on the streets and refuse to accept help when it's so desperately needed. I think the majority of people on the verge of homelessness and experiencing it 
are not people that are doing it because they're addicted to drugs. Right now, we have a median income in the United States of $31,000 and median rent of $1,702. When I think about those statistics and how that's going to leave $800 in the pockets of the median worker, the median citizen of the United States, that's not a lot of money to save for an emergency. And 60%, over 60% of Americans now are saying that they live paycheck to paycheck. So one simple emergency puts them in a position where they can't pay rent and they can easily be evicted. I think most people in the United States are just one accident away from being homeless. And many people become homeless simply because of an unfortunate emergency. That's not an economy that allows the average person to thrive. That's an economy that allows the average person to be on the brink of homelessness constantly. And so I just don't think that it's fair to say that the homeless population in the United States is all drug addicts. We don't collect a lot of data on who's homeless. We have estimates that it's in the hundreds of thousands. But if we did, I'm sure we would find that those conditions are very well what led to homelessness, not some kind of irresponsible drug abuse behavior. I think many people are victims of addiction and it's uh, a sickness rather than something that they take to of their own volition. I think most people would not want to be using drugs that are using drugs. And moreover, it's not the majority of the homeless population. Well, I didn't say that all homeless people are drug addicts. And I also didn't say that they were irresponsible. I agree with you. Addiction can very well be a sickness. And that's why we have to provide treatment for individuals. And in some cases, unfortunately, they need to be forced to go to treatment because it's not a life to stay on the street wrapped up in your addiction. A lot of people, when they become addicts, don't have the mental wherewithal to ask for the help that they need or to accept help. And if someone is sitting on the street in a homeless encampment, and a lot of the people in the encampments do unfortunately have mental illness and drug addiction, there are a lot of homeless people, absolutely, who were put there through economic circumstances. But these encampments that we're talking about in San Francisco are basically a different beast entirely, where they are made up of basically individuals who are living a very uh, unfortunate lifestyle, I guess you could say. And they end up gravitating towards each other because they end up becoming basically these places of lawlessness. And when you hear from uh, statistics of public safety, you end up seeing that a lot of the police calls and a lot of the calls for help um, in these cities end up coming from those homeless encampments because of the high rates of violence and sexual assault that exists there. When I think about San Francisco, I can't help but think about how we saw the tech sector grow so much there and so many folks who are making very high salaries working for the biggest corporations in the tech industry, they drove up the price of rents and they drove people out of their homes. The situation of homelessness in San Francisco is one that begins and ends with America's largest corporations in the state not addressing the problem of gentrification. When you have the conditions of people being forced out of the formal economy and forced out of their homes, of course we're going to see them engage in some lawlessness. They've been forced out of the formal economy. They have to make money and they have to survive somehow. And they've made it illegal in many cities, cities, including cities like San Francisco, to occupy certain public spaces, to even sleep on the streets. So when you criminalize homelessness in response, of course, it's gonna be unlawful behavior to be living in an encampment in a place that's not a formal residential area. But I think that uh, knowing that, that this begins and ends with the problem of people being pushed out and the problem of economic circumstances, the solution also has to be pertaining to the system that failed people who were living in a city who were doing quite well before we had these uh, economic disturbances from corporations coming in and forcing people to be gentrified out of places they called homes in their community. We need solutions that are relevant to the problem, not ones that address symptoms of it, which I really think criminalizing homelessness and moving encampments is precisely that. They're still going to exist. We could force them into treatment, I totally agree. We should provide public health care when it comes to mental health and addiction help for these people. I think that's a good solution and one that would probably curb a lot of homelessness in cities like San Francisco and across the country. But unless you give them homes and economic opportunity, it's going to be a problem that continues to perpetuate. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. We'll be back with more Rising. <laughs>